Hey, this is Josh with Budget Mechanic. If you're watching this video, you're probably experiencing some car vibrating shaking issues. So that would be, you're at the stoplight, your steering wheel is vibrating, the car is kind of shaking and buzzing, and the rest of the time it runs fine. There's lots of reasons this can happen, but I'm gonna show you the most common and hit on some of the more obscure as well. Now, if your check engine light is on, you wanna start with that, because that's gonna point you more specifically to what your issue is. Whether you have a code reader or you go to your local auto parts store that will read your code for free, start there. If you don't have a check engine light, it means you will have to diagnose yourself. All right, your most common issues are going to be your motor mounts, your spark plugs, your air system, and your fuel system. Now, I understand air and fuel systems are going to have a lot of elements within that, but we're going to address some fix-all solutions as well as go after the common culprits. So, first thing is motor mounts. Your engine is held in place by three or four points that are supposed to be made out of rubber that isolate the vibration from the engine from the car. And when they wear out, they don't work as well. So every car is going to be a little bit different, but in general, you're going to have engine mounts on both sides and the front and the back of your motor. And you can check them individually, which I'll show you in a second. But if you want to kind of get an overall picture of how your engine mounts are doing and whether they're working, you get an assistant and start it up, put it in drive with the brake on, and when it goes into gear, you watch the motor with the hood open and see if it pitches back and forth. It shouldn't move very much, and if there's a lot of motion with the engine overall, you know that your mounts are getting old. So the movement in this engine looks pretty normal, but I'm gonna go ahead and check the individual mounts for any signs of wear. So often, one of the easiest engine mounts to see is on the passenger side. What you're looking for is the rubber area this is solid rubber. This will start to crack, big chunks can fall out, and essentially just breaks down, and then metal starts hitting on metal. So you wanna check for areas that are between the engine and the car that are hitting, but this one looks pretty good. Here's the one on the front of the motor on this car. Again, it's this center section is all rubber, and what'll happen is it breaks down and the engine mount falls through and metal, metal starts rubbing on metal. Looks good. So again, depending on your car, Mounts will be in slightly different places, but on four cylinders, often there's one underneath the air box, and then you'll have one back behind the motor. Um, oftentimes the transmission will have its own additional mount, so keep your eye out for that. Also, if one engine mount is bad, it puts a lot of stress on the other mounts, so chances are those are about to go as well. If you're gonna work on them, usually the bolts are pretty large and quite tight. Probably best to have a nice breaker bar and some big sockets. Second thing, spark plugs. So spark plugs burn the fuel, create the power, and if they are worn out or contaminated, they'll make your engine run rough for sure. So you've got to remove your spark plug to check it out. And when you're pulling it out, you're checking for things like leaking oil down into the cylinder, um, which would contaminate a spark plug. When you get it out, you're looking for the burned out electrode, too big of a gap, too small of a gap. Um, just if the thing looks corroded and old. Also, cars are meant to have their spark plugs changed at uh, set mileages. So if you don't know when yours were done or it's time to change them, they're really cheap, really helps to just put in a new set and eliminate that problem because a spark plug can actually be failing or going bad without any physical signs. Third thing, your air system. So your air system is what brings the air in and mixes it with the fuel at the right ratio so that your engine runs smoothly and efficiently. If the system starts leaking or gets dirty or contaminated, it can cause your car to start running rough. So when you're looking at your air system, you know the air is coming in through the air filter but then basically being distributed all over the place for your engine. So the reason a vacuum leak would cause your engine to run rough is because air is entering where the system is not expecting it to. So this is all controlled by sensors, and if air is coming in at a, in an odd place, it's gonna throw off your fuel mixture. It's usually through rubber hoses. Those can be physically seen, um, which is the most common way to find them, or sometimes if they're really bad, you can hear a hissing noise while the engine's running. You can hear a hissing noise, and that might help you track it down. This is a big problem area. Oftentimes you'll get cracks kind of around these flex joints. Any air hoses, which is gonna be um, these guys here, and a lot of stuff coming into your manifold. You're checking the joints where they connect, and then you're just looking for a collapsed hoses, obviously cracks, splits. Your EVAP system is usually back in here by the intake. Um, that can cause shaking and vibrating if you get a hole in there. Depending on your engine too, you may have a lot of vacuum lines that run behind your intake. So you just wanna remember, uh, check stuff behind the engine. So there's obviously gonna be a lot of things that aren't uh, vacuum lines or air lines, like you know, coolant hoses, big and small. But um, if you don't know the differences, 
then just kind of double check everything. So in addition to having vacuum leaks or air leaks in your hoses, you can also have them kind of anywhere in the system like uh, gasket surfaces on your throttle body or in your intake manifold and you can't necessarily see them. So one trick is to get carburetor cleaner and while the car is running, you spray it around and it will actually change the idle of the engine when, the, when a leak is present and it sucks that carb cleaner in. And so you can kind of locate leaks at that point. So if I'm going around spraying this and I suddenly get a drop or a spike in my idle, I know that I might have a vacuum leak area. It just doesn't work for really small leaks, but it can be a good general starting point. So in addition to leaks, your air system can also get contaminated. And basically oil, water, dirt can get in there and mess up the different components of the system and cause your engine to run rough. We are gonna do kind of a general clean of the whole air system using some throttle body cleaner or some uh, carb cleaner. So what you wanna do is come here and remove this main hose from the air box. Some cars may not let you run with this disconnected completely because the sensors are freaking out. So you may have to put the hose kind of almost all the way back and just leave a little slit for the straw of your cleaner to go in. In addition, read the can carefully that you're using. There's a lot of different products that do this and they may have you spray it directly into the throttle body so you'd remove the hose on this end. Also, the car is probably gonna try to die when you're spraying it in, so having someone in there to press the gas and keep the car alive during the spray is gonna be important. Also, just a note, your check engine light may come on because you've interrupted the system and you're messing up the ratios, but don't worry about that. You can always reset it later and the car will run fine. We're gonna run the engine and spray this in kind of continuously for like 10 minutes or half a can, something like that, and get the engine to burn that stuff through and hopefully clear out all the gunk that will be in our air lines, that will be in our throttle body, etc. So a couple other elements of the air system that I haven't talked about yet, your air filter in this air box and your mass airflow sensor, which is usually on the air box or right at the head of this intake tube. And so those, you don't wanna be running that throttle cleaner through, which is why we sprayed it in the hose past this. Um, there's a special cleaner for that mass airflow sensor. First, you wanna get your air box open and get your filter out. That's not terrible. Um, if it's really, really dirty, it can affect your idle, but it'd be pretty unlikely. So since you've already got your hose disconnected here, you wanna unplug your mass airflow sensor so that you can get a look at that sensor through there. So there's different styles of mass airflow sensor, but essentially all you need to know is don't stick anything in there, don't touch it, and don't spray anything in there except for a mass airflow sensor cleaner because there's really fragile wires and electronics sometimes. And um, essentially you're just gonna spray this stuff in, let it dry, put it back together. So if that didn't help, another big problem area is the throttle body. You wanna make sure that gets a good clean. So I've got the throttle body taken apart. You can see it's actually pretty gummed up still, even after we did that spray. So the main thing with working with throttle bodies, you don't want to push the butterfly but with your fingers. You don't want to move that. Um, on the newer cars that are electronically throttle controlled, you'll mess up the computer if you move it by hand. So ideally on these electronically controlled um, throttle bodies, you want to have someone inside the cab turning the key on or sometimes pressing the gas to open that butterfly up so that you can get carb cleaner all the way through and clean up that that area right where the butterfly touches is often the trouble spot and you want to make sure that's really clean so if cleaning your throttle body didn't make a difference there are other elements of the air system that can be cleaned and their gaskets replaced, such as your intake manifold, your idle air control valve. Um, but those can be in-depth repairs and they're not as common. So before you get into that, let's move on to the next most common cause for rough idle. Fourth thing, your fuel system. Like the air system, the fuel mixes with the air at the right ratio so that your car runs properly. Again, if it gets contaminated or stuff is going where it's not supposed to, the car's not gonna run right. So what happens with your fuel system, over time, bad gas or the ethanol in gas will gum the whole system up. And like I mentioned before, that air fuel mixture gets thrown off and the incorrect amount of fuel goes into your engine. And that will cause rough running, uh, lack of fuel economy, etc. So what you wanna do 
is get a bottle of fuel system cleaner. Um, there's many brands, a lot of them work really well. Um, you just want to follow the directions really closely, but essentially you put this in your gas tank and it runs through the whole system and it burns off all that gunk and uh, buildup that's on your valves and in your injectors and your fuel lines and hopefully clears up your idling problem. So let's give it a shot. So with the fuel system cleaners, it's going to take you a tank or two of gas before you start to feel the results. Um, and you want to just follow the instructions really well. On this seafoam, it says to add two ounces for every gallon of gas. So I know I've got about eight gallons in this car, so I'm going to put in 16 ounces. It's a full can. So the most common causes for rough idle in your fuel system is going to be your injectors and maybe even your valves. You can go in and remove your injectors, clean them out really well. You can use a more aggressive um, valve cleaner that you would spray into your intake just like we did for the air system. Um, but they're a little more involved, so you definitely want to start with that fuel additive first because it doesn't require any disassembly. Okay, if you've addressed all of these issues and you're still experiencing the same symptoms, there's a number of other causes. Some of them are easy to diagnose, some of them not so much. So another way that you can get vibrations at low RPM is belts. So your timing belt, your accessory belts, if they get loose or they get damaged, they can start flopping around. If the tensioner stops holding constant pressure and it starts moving around, um, you'll get engine shake that way. You can see how this tensioner wheel right here is not jumping up and down. Everything looks stable. So one other possibility is on your harmonic balancer or your crankshaft pulley at the very bottom, um, there's a, a rubber inset or a bushing kind of built into the pulley and it's designed to remove uh, vibrations. So you can get down in there and you can inspect your crankshaft pulley and if it has that rubber ring inside, you can look for cracks, look for pitting, look for it breaking down um, and that can be one reason. So the last few things I want to mention are possible but they are quite rare and are not something that you can probably handle on your own without specialty equipment. That's things like your torque converter and your transmission uh, burnt out valves or even like a computer issue with your car. Those are going to be things you're going to want to take it to a mechanic. So if none of the stuff that we've done thus far has helped, probably time to take it in. All right, I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching and if you haven't already, please subscribe.